In this video, I'm going to show you how to make Mother Goose Club character cupcakes, which are great for kids' birthday parties. <laughs> Today, I'm going to make Eep, Teddy, and Baba cupcakes. The materials you need are vanilla and chocolate cupcakes, chocolate and vanilla frosting, vanilla wafer cookies, assorted candies for ears and bows, food coloring, a pint-sized glass, a knife, a spoon, spatula, scissors, and baggies in gallon and sandwich sizes. Let's start with our Eat the Mouse cupcake. I used a store-bought vanilla frosting that I added one teaspoon of blue food coloring to and whisked. You could also use a homemade buttercream. Now take your large plastic baggie and put one corner down in the bottom of your cup. Fold the bag open over the edges of the cup. Now scoop in your blue frosting until it's full. Now lift your bag out, squeeze out the air, and zip the bag shut. Squeeze the frosting down to the bottom corner of the bag. and then snip the end off. Now you have a piping bag. Starting on the edge of the cupcake, squeeze gently in a spiral motion until you reach the center of the cupcake. To make the face, I filled two baggies, one with black frosting and one with white frosting. Put a vanilla wafer cookie on your counter. Using your black frosting, Draw little eyebrows, eyes, a nose, and a mouth. This may take a couple of practice cookies. And use your white to add a little sparkle to his eye. Now take your cookie and place it in the center of your cupcake. To make the ears, cut a chocolate circle in half and place them where Eep's ears would go. Now trace over the chocolate with your blue frosting. and finish them with two blue candies. And there's Eep. For Teddy, I'm using a chocolate cupcake. I filled a bag with chocolate frosting like I did for Eep. And we start at the edge and work our way to the center. Then we place our cookie face and our chocolate circle ears. Trace over the ears with the chocolate frosting. For her special bow, I'll add two blue candy-covered chocolates. And there's Teddy. Now let's make Baba. For Baba, I'm using a vanilla cupcake and vanilla frosting that I added eight drops of red and two drops of blue into. We're gonna start by making a series of dots around the edge of the cupcake. Then using your spoon, smear each dot towards the center of the cupcake. Now we're gonna make a second row of dots, just like the first. And 
Now let's add our cookie face. And two purple chocolate covered candies for ears. And there's Baba. You can also simply spread the frosting on using a spreader like this, but a regular butter knife will also work. Then add your cookie face and your chocolate candies, and it's just as cute. These cupcakes are the perfect birthday party treat for your little Mother Goose Club fan. Share photos of the Mother Goose Club goodies you make at home by hashtagging Mother Goose Club on social media. As always, we'd love to hear from you, so type in comments below, and don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> Boom. Hey everyone, today me and the girls are gonna show you how to make a spooky spaghetti sensory bin. It'll help you develop some of those sensory skills and get you ready for Halloween. So, let's go. One pound of spaghetti prepared according to the box's instructions. White vinegar, a tablespoon, food coloring, a one gallon resealable plastic bag, plastic bin, Spooky toys, we use squishy eyeballs, witch's fingers, bones, spiders, rubber snakes, and pumpkins. Halloween candy, blindfolds. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Now, now that everybody's good and scared, we are going to work on our spooky spaghetti sensory bins. Are you guys ready? Yeah! Are you ready, Lynn? All right, great. So the spooky star of the show today is our sensory spaghetti. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna show you how to color that spaghetti and make it something that you can use for this activity. So the first thing we have to do to get this party started is to get the vinegar that's in this bottle into these bowls. So how we're gonna do that, we're gonna take this, the tablespoon, and we're going to fill it up four times. You guys want to count along with me? Yeah. Good. So. One. Two. two. All right. Three. And. Four. All right. So we went to the store. We couldn't find any purple uh, food coloring. But what we could find, we could find. Red. And what, what color is this? Blue. Actually, right, so we could find red and blue. And what do we do? What happens when we mix red and blue? It makes the color purple. we want. Mix it up gently and you'll start to see that that purple color is going to start to happen. So we're going to take our vinegar and our color and we're going to put it in our bag. We're going to put the bag, the bowl in the bag a little bit so then when we turn it, it's that simple. There's literally no way we can spill it. And then we start packing our spaghetti in. Just, just put them in there. Put them in there however you want. <laughs> Atta girl. Yeah, there you go. This can be a little tricky even for an adult, so if you want to move things along a little bit, you may want to help your kids with this. And we'll close your bag. You're gonna work that color into your spaghetti. Turn it that way, turn it the other way, and then and then you can turn it, you can flip it over, you can shake it. You can flip it, you can shake it. Yeah, you can flip it, you can shake it. Yeah, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Kids love using their hands, so this part of the activity is always a lot of fun. So they get to handle the spaghetti and mix the vinegar and mix the color and put it in the bag and, and turn it around and flip it and, and do all of these different things. It's a great way for them to develop their fine motor skills and have a lot of fun while doing it. Yes, excellent job guys. So now that we have oodles of colored spaghetti noodles, we're gonna let them sit for a few hours and let them really soak up that color and stuff, okay? And once your spaghetti is saturated, you give it a little rinse and then you can dump it in your bin. Ah, yeah. Squeeze them all over in there. All right. Now, here's where things get spooky. Once you have your bin filled with slimy spaghetti, now it's time to blindfold your kiddos. Yeah, put on your, yeah, put on your mask. There you go, get the girl. What does the fox say? Oh boy, shout out to, to the, what does the fox say, people? Go ahead and put, put that down over your eyes, put that down over your eyes. Then, you're gonna add lots of tricks into the mix. And you guys, once you have all your items in the bin, have your kids reach in and guess what they find. We're gonna play rock, paper, scissors. 
to see who goes first. Nope, you gotta close your. Uh, 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 I'll tell you who won. Two, three. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Isla, you draw first. Pumpkin. It's a pumpkin? Yeah. Alright, put that in your bowl. That was that was pretty easy. What do you see? What do you, what is that? Eyeball. <laughs> yeah, here's an eyeball. Did you peek? Hold on, hold on. What? What's that feel like? Tell me, tell me what you're feeling right now. You gotta leave it on that long. Kids first learn to understand things via their senses. So each time they encounter something that's cold or sticky or wet, it reinforces their understanding of those characteristics. Is it slimy? Yeah. Is it is it soft? Is it squishy? Is it an eyeball squish? It is an eyeball. Good job. All right, another eyeball. What? Uh, so you're good at finding eyeballs. All right. What's this? A bone. A bone. It's made of plastic. Everything. Oh. Ah. <laughs> and what does that feel like? Does that does that feel does that feel like anything? I, like your mask I don't on. like spiders. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! What? Is, <laughs> is it a snake? It's <laughs> After some more challenging sensory tasks, it's always great to reward your kids with a treat. And since it's Halloween, how could you not incorporate candy? Dump all of that in. On the count of three, I want you guys to dig right in and find as much Halloween okay. candy okay. as you possibly can. Are you guys ready? Yeah! Right, let me toss it up, toss it up, toss it up. One, two, three. Alright, and a girl. I have so much candy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen. Oh man, you had eleven. Even with treats involved, this is a great opportunity for your kids to benefit from sensory play. You can have them guess what the flavor is of the candy, whether it's sweet, whether it's sour. Which one of these are we gonna have Isla try first? <laughs> I'm excited. Yes, okay, so unwrap it. Can you unwrap it? You unwrap it, okay. Here. Yeah. Now, okay. All right. Now, here's here's your stick. What flavor is that? Um. Is it watermelon? Ooh. Well done, Isla. Are you ready? Oh. For the, are you ready for the next one? Yeah. Is it orange? Ooh, yes. Yeah. You are, you're on a roll. <laughs> Having kids communicate their experiences strengthens language development and social skills, which helps them communicate better in everyday life. After you make your spooky spaghetti sensory bin, be sure to let us know how it goes in the comments. If you got any tips, tricks, or treats, we'd love to hear about it. Thanks so much for watching and happy Halloween. Watermelon. <laughs> <laughs>